Welcome everyone, today we are talking about the availability as a quality attribute of the architecture. To start considering different patterns and techniques for the availability, first of all, we should define the term availability itself. You can see different definitions by the book that I have previously read. So in simple words, availability is about making your system to respond with correct responses, even if something goes wrong or even if the service as a whole goes down. Or slightly realistic picture availability is about giving guarantees to your clients that outage lasts not more than a specified period. And right after that, we should define the stateful and stateless terms as well, because availability patterns and tactics are different for both types of applications. So stateful application means that it preserves some data inside it. And most usually this is information about the previously done requests. It implicitly means that for two same actions in different times, we may end up with two different responses. At the examples, we have client applications, different storages, etc. They are all stateful. On the other hand, stateless applications act the same for two different requests, and they don't preserve any state of previously done requests at all. As an example, we can consider RESTful API and any kind of servers that don't preserve previous requests information. Okay, let's move to the availability tactics and patterns. And the most usually used technique for availability is redundancy. This means that you just keep two copies of the same behaviors if we are talking about the stateless application or the two copies of behavior plus data if we are talking about some kind of stateful application like database storage, etc. The reason is simple. If we have only one instance of the application and it fails, we can do nothing then. There is no magic behind this. And for sure, prior the replacing dead node with the ally one, we should first of all detect the fault and we can use different kinds of monitoring tools like uh, ping, monitoring of the resources, etc. We can find a lot of tools for that in cloud environments like AWS or uh, Azure. And for sure, we should prevent the failure as much as we can. So we should ensure the good quality of the code base, anticipating different kinds of exceptions, monitoring resources all the time, configuring different alerts if something goes wrong, etc. So let's start with implementation of the redundancy for the stateless application. Basically, for the high availability, it's better to use different cloud environments, but for our purpose, we will use Docker and local environment. And for the stateless application, I will use .NET Core. Actually, you may use everything that you want. You can use Node.js, Python, whatever. The basic requirement that they should support HTTP server, and that's all. Now we can see that it works. Basically, we define the only one get request and it returns the value from the configuration which with key node ID. Yes, this is it. And I needed to be able to override it with Docker Compose later on to show you that we are actually on the different nodes. 
and it just returns it as a text. Nothing special. Now let's configure the Nginx and Docker Compose to create two instances of this application with uh, Nginx as a load balancer. Okay, so I added the docker file, docker compose yaml file and two configs for the engines in the root of our application. Let me explain what is going on in those files. We have just simple regular docker file for the standard .NET Core web application, which builds this application and publish it inside the image. And then in our docker compose, we can see the two instances of the same application because the context of Docker file is the same. And they are basically doing the same, in, but for their first application, we override our node ID configuration value with first up, for the second, it is second up. And um, we also define the Nginx container and mount the configuration into the or volumes for the app conf and the Nginx conf. Okay, we don't expose any port from the our applications because actually it is not as secure as it could be. We will access our applications only through the Nginx and for the Nginx we expose only a 5000 port. For the Nginx conf, they are just default configs. And uh, the most important here config is to include everything which is under the etc nginx conf d directory with everything, with every possible file with extension conf. And actually this every possible file with extension conf is our app conf. We define the timeout in order to nginx would be able to decide that some of the nodes are dead by three seconds. We define the simple server section. We are listening to the 5000 port because we have exposed it before in the Docker file. We defined upstream backend. It's kind of pull of your servers for load balancing. And we're trying to access it by this 5000 port. Looks pretty simple. Let's try to build this system right now. Uh, let's see. Yes. Good. Actually, we have two containers with our applications without any exposing of the ports and one in Jinx, which exposed 5000 port. And let's see what we can do with that. So localhost 5000 and go to our road. Okay, we can see that first up responds to our request. If we retry, we can see that Nginx just pass this request to any of the pool of the servers. And now let's see what is going on if we just Finish one of the containers. So, okay. mm -hmm. Call one of the, our applications is stopped now, and we have Nginx and stateless API too. And then our client sinks about three seconds as we define in timeout, and after this we can only see the response from the second API. If we remove every cached re response and try with incognito mode, we see the same second up, only the second up. And if we restart our container again, 
and we can see that again we have two different apps. This is the basic principle of availability tactics for the stateless application. And here is architecture of what we have done before. So we have two stateless APIs with the same behavior and the Nginx which acts like a load balancer here. And you may ask, okay, we did availability tactics for the stateless API, but does this architecture prevent us from the failure of the Nginx? And the answer for sure, no, because if Nginx goes down, we can do nothing with that. And uh, it's pretty much popular problem with load balancers, and we should have some kind of workaround for them as well. And the most popular workaround seems like that. So let's say it is a client and we have Nginx and two applications. If Nginx goes down, we can do nothing from the client side. We may see only that service is unavailable or something like that. What is the workaround in that case? The workaround is to create the redundant node of the Nginx as well, or in our case, load balancer node. This will be in Jinx 1, this will be in Jinx 2, and it also forwards our request to those two nodes. And if our Nginx 1 is going down, then the client will know that it can try the Nginx 2 instance for load balancing. For sure, we should populate this config for client for our clients, and each client should contain the list of possible load balancers that it may try to use. Something like that. And now let's move to redundancy for stateful application. And for this sample, I will use a replication mechanism using PostgreSQL. Uh, you can read more about replication in the great book, Designing Data Intensive Applications by Martin Klepman. And there are plenty of types of replications, like asynchronous, synchronous, leader to leader, leader follower, leaderless replications, etc. But in our example, we'll use the, the simplest one. Uh, it is leader follower and the synchronous application. Sorry, I will not dig into the details of creating Postgres replication mechanism from scratch. And I will use already made images in Docker Compose from the internet. I will leave the link below in the description. So just create Docker Compose file. And paste it. As you can see, we don't use the official image of PostgreSQL. We are using this image from Docker Hub. And it supports the replication for us already. So we have Postgres master, which will act like load balancer for us, or kind of load balancer. According to the leader follower replication topology, it may accept the writes and may uh, process the reads as well, but for the, all the slaves or followers, we are able only to read the data inside it. Let's try to set up this system as well. Okay, we can see that our master and slave nodes are up right now with the ports 5861 and 5860. Okay, and uh, let's try to connect to those servers using the tool pg ad admin 4. It's kind of client for this Postgres databases. Create server and create it like leader first. For connection, we will use local address. For the port, we will use our leader port. From Docker file, we can see that our user is Postgres user. So we'll left it like this. And for the password, we will use my password. Save. Okay, seems like we can connect to that and our default database is my database as well. Now, let me connect the follower as well. Okay, 
much faster. Okay, and we can see that we are able to connect to the follower as well. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, the table presented here was created yesterday. Let me drop it from the master for sure because the rights are acceptable only from master. And we can see that it is also will be deleted from the follower. Oh, sorry, not a delete, but drop. You can see that in the master we don't have this table. And for sure, we don't have this table in the follower. Okay, now let me create the table inside our leader with one column and character wiring type. We have created it. We may try to query this table from both leader and follower and as you can see both instances returns re return us empty result now let me add a few rows from our leader okay create one and two Let's see on the results. We can query from the leader and see the test row one and test row two. Let's check the same table on the follower. We can see test row one and test row two as well. Now, let me just stop our leader. Yes, now we have only the follower one. And if we try to select from our leader, yes, we cannot do that because application has lost the database connection because our database is not alive right now. But for the follower, we can query it again and again because we preserve this data in another instance. And on top of their behavior, we also save the durability of our database because if we even lost the disk from our leader, we still can restore it from our followers for sure unfortunately for this replication strategy we are not able to write to the followers and this may be a problem for this case to to do a workaround for this we can try a quorum algorithm to select new leader one and uh, start our rights to this newly selected leader or we can use other replication topologies like leader leader or even leaderless replication. In that case, we are able to write and read from all the nodes. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe to my social media below the video because there may be polls of uh, what I should do the next. And from the previous polls, you choose the architectural topic. And as you can see, I did the architectural topic video for you. On top of that, you may read the article about the same thing that I have explained in that video below, if you don't like to watch the video. Uh, thank you for your attention again, and goodbye.